Good morning, Riverbanks friends. This is Milo, your conservation communications manager. And this morning for Z Learning, I have to say we're off to a pretty tranquil start. It's nice and quiet, very peaceful here at Riverbanks this morning. It's a beautiful day. And I'm joined by a couple of Australian friends, one who is right behind me this morning. I wanna introduce you to some of our residents oh, before she hops away. Hopefully some of you caught that quick. That was Penelope, our red kangaroo right here at Riverbank Zoo. But those of you who are tuning in this morning, I am hanging out this morning inside kangaroo walkabout. And this morning you get to be a little part of our morning routine for our kangaroo and wallabies right here at Riverbanks. Now, those of you who are just tuning in, I encourage you to send in those questions about all sorts of marsupials. We're gonna be talking a lot about our macropods, which are our largest marsupials, our kangaroos and our wallabies. But those of you who are just tuning in, I have a quick question for all of you before I introduce some of our animal residents. What is a marsupial? Comment below, I wanna hear what you have to say. What makes a marsupial a marsupial? And those of you who are really savvy on your animal knowledge, which I know most of you are, I want you to type in some marsupials that you can think of off the top of your head. Maybe that live at riverbanks or maybe that live in your backyard or live around other parts of the world as well. I want you to go ahead and comment in what is a marsupial? What makes a marsupial a marsupial? Jill, it looks like you're our first one to chime in. Mama keeps a baby in a pouch. You are spot on, absolutely. That is definitely a criteria of being a marsupial. Amanda, how high do kangaroos jumps is what Briggs is wondering this morning. Briggs, red kangaroos can jump about six feet straight up in the air with a big old leap. In fact, if you check out our caption this morning, that is what our Z learning activity is all about this morning. We're gonna go ahead and feature kind of a, a jumping contest of sort this morning. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Koalas are another great example of marsupials, Beverly. And you're right, Raylan, they do carry their children in their pouch. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and kind of walk around a little bit. We're gonna check out to see where our animal residents are this morning here in Kangaroo Walkabout. There are actually three residents right here in the walkabout that I wanna introduce you to this morning, all of who are kinda of spread out all around the habitat. Now, those of you who are familiar with riverbanks, you know this place well. In fact, where I'm standing right now is actually where guests typically can stand while we're not temporarily closed, of course. But right now, I kinda of have the place to myself. I'm joined by three of our animal residents, two wallabies and one kangaroo. In fact, let me go ahead and turn around this camera, see if you can get a little bit of a view. Caroline, that's a great question. How old is our kangaroo? Well, let me introduce you to her instead. She's right in the middle of our view right now. This is Penelope. She was who is hanging out behind me earlier. And Penelope is a two-year-old red kangaroo. And right behind her, if you can really see, that's Dottie, our oldest resident here at Kangaroo Walkabout. Let's see if we might be able to see Penelope hopping around a little bit. She's going nice and slow right now, showing off all those unique kangaroo adaptations. Wyatt, great question. How far can they jump? Well, if you check out the caption, it's right around 25 feet. And in one big leap from the beginning to end, that is a massive jump, even for a kangaroo. So we wanna encourage you to maybe have a, a jumping contest yourself this morning as we kick off our week of Z learning. So let's go ahead and do a quick tour around the habitat. So you can see Penelope, our red kangaroo, is hanging out right behind that tree. And then Dottie, our red-necked wallaby, she's hanging out over by one of our behind the scenes area doors. And I wanna actually go ahead and bring you over to the middle of our habitat because there's one last resident. In fact, we'll stop over here at the ID sign. It's our Tamar Wallaby and her name is Rebecca. And Rebecca is right around five years old and maybe you can see Rebecca. I'll give her plenty of personal space this morning, but she is right hanging out next to that side of the enclosure. So we have Rebecca, Dottie, and Penelope. And this morning, they've already been enjoying their breakfast. Our animal care staff came out onto Habitat. They gave them their grains, their fresh produce. Those of you who are just tuning in, we're checking out what our kangaroos and wallabies are eating this morning. Looks like we have a little bit of corn still left. That's one of their favorite snacks. Carrots and then lettuce, of course, too. 
But you also might notice around the habitat, there's lots of little sticks stuck into the ground. Our keepers came out this morning and gave out our kangaroos and wallaby some of their favorite snacks, which are fresh browse. They love to chew on all those fresh leaves, even during our temporary closure. But there is one last special thing that we're gonna do. I wanna give you another quick view, those of you who are just tuning in. Let's go peek at our other two residents over here for a total of three. Once again, that is Penelope over here, a red kangaroo, and then Dottie, our red-necked wallaby. Now you might be wondering, kangaroos and wallabies, are they the same animals? Are they babies of one another? It's a great question. We hear it all the time here at Riverbanks. Everyone always assumes the little ones are always the baby, but we all have three full-grown animals, and kangaroos and wallabies are actually two different types of marsupials. So they're very closely related. They look very similar, but they're actually different types of animals. Great questions, everybody. I hope to get to as many as I possibly can, but you all are sending them in so fast. Hopefully, Jackson, you caught that quick mention that I had about the difference between kangaroos and wallabies. They are different types of animals, but they are part of the same family. But probably the biggest, easiest difference between the two that you'll notice right off, kangaroos are going to be much larger and wallabies are typically much smaller. Valen, age seven, how old do kangaroos live? Well, Miss Penelope is our youngest resident here at Kangaroo Walkabout. She's only two years old, so she has plenty of life still to live. Typically, median life expectancy is anywhere between 7 and 20 years old, depending on those species, since they all are so very different. Emily, great question. Where is their habitat in the wild? Well, kangaroos and wallabies are only found in Australia. In fact, let's go ahead and come on over here to one of our other ID graphics, and we'll show you on the map where all these animals live. So if you're looking at a big old map of the world, you can see this is where we live right here in sunny South Carolina. Their native home is going to be in Australia, in that southern hemisphere. Redneck wallabies would be found in that red section. Great question. I'm glad you all are asking. But without further ado, our keepers, before they went off to go take care of some other animal residents this morning, they left us a bucket full of special snacks. In fact, this morning they're getting some special enrichment, our kangaroo and wallabies. It looks like we have some Kong toys, some balls, all covered with, yes, you guessed it, peanut butter. Too many animals to count all around riverbanks love the snack of peanut butter. Now it's not a regular part of their diet. They're not getting it every single day. So this is definitely a very special bonus. So with your help this morning, all 700 of you, I want to go ahead and take out all these different enrichment items covered in peanut butter. And I think we should go ahead and spread them around the habitat. Those of you who are just joining in, we're here at Kangaroo Walkabout about to spread out some special treats, some special enrichment this morning. So let's go ahead and find some good spots to hide them. This one's pretty good spot. It's right next to a container that already has some food for them this morning. Perfect, that'll be a good spot here. Let's take a peek at what's in the rest of their diet. We got plenty of carrots in this bin, some corn, grains, broccoli even. They're eating some pretty healthy meals. Hopefully y'all are eating some pretty healthy meals too. Megan, great question. How do kangaroos defend themselves? Well, kangaroos have a very, very powerful leg system. Both of their legs are extremely powerful, obviously for locomotion, getting around in their habitat, but they can also use it to kick and defend themselves as well. Here, let's go ahead and bring this one over a little closer to Ms. Rebecca. You can see her over there on the back fence line. We're gonna go ahead and set this Kong right there for her. That way, if she decides to want to have any of our peanut butter this morning, she's more than welcome to it but they will use their legs to kick, but they can also use their hands as well. Um, their hands are very strong and actually have claws on them too. Let's see, we have two more items here. Let's go ahead and place this one. Still a little bit of peanut butter left on that one right there. And then I think this yellow one needs to head over closer to our kangaroo and wallaby friends over here. Let's go ahead and bring it all the way over to this direction. Anna Claire, great question. Do kangaroos really box? Well, that's a great one. I'm glad you asked <laughs> because it definitely looks like they box when all actuality, they're more grabbing and using their claws as defense if they need to. 
There's our enrichment item with our kangaroo and our wallaby right behind them. Y'all are sending in fantastic questions. I'm glad y'all are tuning in this morning. Right here at Kangaroo Walkabout. Melissa, I just caught your question of how fast can they go? Well, red kangaroos have been known to clock in right around 35 miles per hour, which is a pretty amazing feat, given the fact that they're doing it with two legs. Not four like other animals, they are truly hopping on both of those legs and they'll use that big, long, thick tail to use as balance to help locomote and get them going as fast as they possibly can at about 35 miles per hour. Jessica was wondering, do they like treats? Well, we'll have to wait and see. All of those different enrichment items are covered in peanut butter this morning. So we'll have to see if they're interested in snacking on them. It looks like Penelope is starting to make her way around the rest of the habitat. Avery is wondering, how do they sleep? Well, not too long from now, once they're done enjoying their breakfast this morning, they are all probably gonna go find a nice spot to nap. And typically, wallabies and kangaroos like to lay down on their sides and go ahead and sleep kind of like you would expect them to. But since they have this big habitat to explore on their own, so they get to choose wherever they want to hang out, wherever they want to take a nap. And sometimes that might be in a grassy area in the shade, or sometimes right here even on the path. Those of you who can see, there's Penelope. She's hiding behind some bamboo in the habitat right now. Ryan was wondering, are either the kangaroos or wallabies a part of an AZA SSP at our zoo? Now, none of these species are necessarily a part of a species survival plan, but they're definitely a part of a population management plan, which means that we do work closely with other zoos that are accredited through the AZA, the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, to help to make sure we're supporting a sustainable population. Now, specifically with this habitat, we can care for more individuals. In fact, we're working closely with other institutions around the country to see if we can help rehome and add to our kangaroo and wallaby mob right here at Riverbanks. There you can go. You can get a better view there of Penelope. Rebecca was wondering, can they stand on their tail? Well, they can't necessarily stand on their tail, but if you notice as Penelope hops around the back today, they use it definitely almost like a kickstand to help support their body weight. They're gonna be using those two back powerful legs more often than not, and then they'll use that tail almost as a kickstand. Now, a really fun, odd fact about kangaroos and wallabies, they can't actually go backwards. They're unable to hop backwards. They can only hop forwards and they typically will hop forwards simultaneously with their legs moving at the exact same time. So they don't use their legs the same way as we do. So right now we have a great view of Dottie. She is our 15 year old individual. And then Penelope, who's just right on the other side of the fence line. Gates open, she can go wherever she wants, but right now she was wanting to hang out back there. And Penelope is our two year old kangaroo. So our oldest one, Dane, since you were just asking, is right here, it's Dottie. And then Rebecca is only five years old and she's hanging out on the other side of the habitat this morning. Avery, I am so glad that you asked how high do kangaroos jump? That is a perfect segue into our Z learning activity this morning. We wanna encourage all of you this morning to see how high or how far I should say you can jump. We want to see that you have a little bit of a, a jumping competition at your own home. Maybe it's in your driveway or maybe it's on the sidewalk in front of your house, but we want you to maybe take a little bit of chalk, measure it out, see how far you can jump and truly see who has the most kangaroo like jump out of your family. Now I'll be really surprised if any of you can jump nearly as far as a kangaroo, but give it your best go. It's a great little exercise this morning especially during our temporary closure to see how much you can be like a kangaroo or a wallaby. I just saw a question come through too. Do kangaroos live in groups? They do. In fact, groups of kangaroos are called mobs, M-O-B, and they live in big mob groups. 
<laughs> looks like this morning Rebecca was wanting to kind of come a little closer. She's moving over this way. Haley was wondering how good of hearing and eyesight do they have? Well, kangaroos and wallabies are prey species, which means that they are eaten by other animals in Australia. In fact, their main predator in Australia are going to be dingoes, and then of course humans as well, unfortunately. But because of that, they're very adapted to be aware of their surroundings. So obviously they have to use their great big ears on the tops of their heads to listen for any predators, but then they have great eyesight. In fact, they almost have a 300 degree view all the way around their bodies to look out for any danger. Alexis just commented in how big do kangaroos get? Now, Penelope is right around adult size, right at two years old, um, but being a female kangaroo, she's not nearly as large as the males can develop to be. So the largest species of kangaroos are red kangaroos, which is the type that she is, and an adult male can weigh up to 200 pounds. It's a pretty big animal, if you ask me, so I don't mind that Penelope's a little on the smaller side since we're sharing space this morning. Now I will say again real quick, we hope to get to all of your different questions. If not live, we'll jump on our comments later on today and comment back with all your great Z learning questions. We love that y'all are tuning in, all 600 of you, and we hope that you're learning new things with these Z learning adventures. I will say though, our kangaroos and wallabies are not going to be our only Australian friends that we visit this week. In fact, we're starting out the week here on Monday in kangaroo walkabout, and then we plan on wrapping up our Z learning adventures this week on Friday, hanging out with our koalas. So those of you who love some marsupials and can't get enough of your down under friends, we encourage you to tune in all week long, but especially on Friday for when we get to focus all on koalas. I just saw a really smart question come in. I'm glad somebody was asking it. In their mother's pouch after birth. Well, typically a red kangaroo will hang out in mom's pouch for anywhere up to nine months long. It's a pretty long amount of time as they're growing and developing. But some of that time, of course, will be out of the pouch. They can jump out and then jump back in. And then eventually when the baby starts to get a little too big, mom will actually kick him out of the pouch and not let him back in. And then they are on their own to hop around with mom and forage for food. All of you who are wondering how far a kangaroo can jump, I encourage you to check out those comments this morning. And it's going to include a little bit of a take-home activity for you this morning, too, to see if you can jump as far as a kangaroo. We're getting a great view right here of Ms. Dottie, who's hopping around right now. She's heading over towards the barn, it looks like. Dottie is a red-necked wallaby, which are one of our largest types of wallabies, not nearly as big as the kangaroos. But once again, the biggest difference between wallabies and kangaroos is going to be size. Wallabies are typically smaller. Kangaroos are a bit bigger, but otherwise they do look very, very similar. They have the same sort of adaptations and typically they share the same sort of spaces out in the wilds of Australia. looks like she's paused and hanging out with us this morning I will say Dottie right before we jumped on live she was hopping around the entire habitat looking for all that yummy browse any sort of fresh leaves she was all about finding <laughs> and I'm gonna guess this morning she's gonna hop around to go try to find some other ones too let's go ahead and turn the camera see if we can get a better view too of Penelope who's hopped on over this direction to that big old pile of fresh cut brows. Now when I say brows, what I mean is fresh tree clippings with fresh leaves all over them. Our keepers make sure to give our animals lots of different choices in their diets. So that way it's not the same food every single day. 
So even though they have these containers that are filled with their diet items, which looks like it's a whole lot of lettuce in this one, a little bit of carrots, we also give them those fresh natural leaves as well. Being a zoo and garden, we have plenty of greenery to choose from. Alexandra was wondering, are they affectionate with humans or do they typically keep their distance? Our individual kangaroo and wallabies like to have a little bit of personal space, which obviously we're giving them plenty of this morning as they enjoy their breakfast. But it all depends on individuals. Each of our animal residents that we care for have their own personalities and their own preferences. Some like to hang out closer near their keepers or their caretakers, and others prefer to have a little bit more of a space bubble. And obviously we take care of our animals all on an individual basis, making sure that they are well cared for and that we provide them what their personalities prefer. Great questions, everybody. I'm seeing all of these. I'm trying to scroll through them as best I can as Penelope hops away to the next big pile of brows. Nico, age five, was wondering, do the wallabies talk to each other? So here at Riverbanks, we have three different species of kangaroos and wallabies. In fact, she's right there behind me. So that's Penelope again. And they do communicate back and forth. Like I said, they overlap ranges in the wilds of Australia. Um, they are very similar types of animals. As she heads over there. <laughs> she wanted to stop by the bucket that I left over in the middle of the pathway. There's probably a little bit of peanut butter in it. Now they typically like to have their own space, but they do like to socialize, especially Penelope, our red kangaroo. She likes to go over and check out everybody, see what they're all up to. Great question, Nico. Balin was wondering, do they live in hot weather? Absolutely. Australia is notoriously hot, almost as hot as South Carolina feels like in the middle of the summertime. But to keep cool, what kangaroos and wallabies will actually do is not only will they avoid kind of the heat of the day and they're active typically mid-morning and early afternoon into the evening, but what they'll also do is they'll actually lick their forearms to kind of cool themselves off. It's a very unique adaptation to kangaroos and wallabies. But right now it is a beautiful day here in South Carolina and they don't have to worry about trying to stay cool whatsoever. But let's go ahead and turn that camera around one more time to see where our kangaroo and wallaby friends are hanging out this morning. Looks like Penelope's trying to follow wherever Dottie is going this morning. one last view of our kangaroo and wallaby friends here this morning and i want to go ahead and encourage all of you to check out our caption right below this live video feature and i want you to go ahead and challenge yourselves to a jumping competition this morning our z learning activities are all about learning new things trying new activities maybe going a little out of your comfort zone and today we want you to stretch your legs just like a kangaroo or wallaby would and see how far you can jump we want you to keep sending us in your questions. We're gonna go ahead and jump on those comments here in just a second to try to answer all the ones that I unfortunately wasn't able to get while we were live. But I will say tomorrow, I wanna to encourage you to tune in live at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning for our next Z learning feature. I will say tomorrow's animal is very different than today's. In fact, we've been talking a whole lot about legs and hopping. Tomorrow's featured animal, here's your hint does not have any legs at all. To find out what I'm talking about, join us tomorrow at 10 a.m. for our next Z learning adventure right here at Riverbank Zoo and Garden. Thank you all so much for joining in this morning and we'll join you on another wild adventure soon. Talk to you later.